For far too long, we've addressed these issues with short-term solutions. That approach stops now. Housing the homeless. Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego wants more beds for the growing number of homeless people on our streets. But she also wants more help. And we start with Mayor Kate Gallego tackling the challenge of homelessness in the valley and holding a lot of people accountable. Welcome back to Square Off. Good to be back. Uh, as usual, I give my full disclosure. My wife is a City of Phoenix employee. Many of our viewers have known that for years. Uh, let's look at the, the big picture. I'll put a graphic up. The city is basking in an economic boom right now, and yet the number of people living in the valley streets has more than doubled. Affordable housing is vanishing. Evictions are climbing. They're the second highest rate in the country. Layer on top of that, drug addiction and mental illness plaguing many of the homeless. I know there isn't a one-sentence answer or a one-paragraph answer, but how do you explain that disconnect, boom and despair? We know that the boom has left many people behind and that we have to do more. This week I propose that as we go into the budget process for the city of Phoenix, we take our largest chunk of discretionary funds and put it towards homelessness. We need to do more. We need more housing units. We need more services. But we also need more partners. But why has the situation gotten worse as much of what's going on around us gets better? We have seen that Phoenix is literally the fastest growing city in the country. People are coming to our community from all over. Some people come without a lot of resources. We've actually had several people come to the city council saying they moved to Phoenix because they thought we represented opportunity and they've not been able to find a job right away or housing right away. Um, maybe came with a few weeks of ability to pay for rent and now are unfortunately living on our streets. But we know the problem is much more complicated than that. With every individual experiencing homelessness, there's a different story. For some, it's economic. For some, they have a behavioral health challenge. We think about 40% may have struggled with some type of disability. And I get this question a lot. Are the city's own policies in part responsible? What we see going on downtown is a lot of expensive apartment complexes going up and driving up rents for everybody, whether by, I hope it's not by intent, but the end result is higher rents everywhere. Should the city rethink what it's doing downtown? As we've moved forward, particularly with city-owned property, which we control, we've been focused on mixed-use, mixed-income mixed projects. For example, this week, we took some city-owned land and said we'd like to see 50% of the units go to affordable and workforce housing, as well as 50% of the units being market rate. That's really based on good data and research. What so, we've so, I hear, I'm sorry, but I hear that a lot. Affordable housing, market rate. What's that going to cost me in a for a monthly rent uh, payment? So market rate is set by the free market and can vary widely, but um, affordable is something that makes sense for someone making less than $50,000. Okay. Now, let's talk about first steps. For more than two decades, the Homeless Services Campus downtown has been the answer uh, to this problem. It's the largest community of homeless people uh, in Arizona on Washington, Washington Street downtown between the state capitol and, and city hall. Hundreds sleep there every night. You seem to reluctantly support expanding capacity by as many as 500 beds there. Why the reluctance and yet still the willingness to think about it? All across the country, we've from Utah to Washington, D.C. to Atlanta, we see cities moving away from larger facilities towards smaller regional ones. That's still something I would like to see. On my first day as mayor, I sat down with young people who'd experienced homelessness, and they said they prefer smaller communities with more supportive services where they're treated as individuals. But I understand that that will take time and we are in a crisis situation right now. It is not a healthy situation and we have to act today. We are hearing from local residents, neighbors, businesses saying, you are asking too much of one neighborhood. We have to step up and have a better solution in the short term. While people do want us to see that long-term transformational change as well. So to those folks saying you can't keep bringing those folks into our neighborhood, this would be bringing more of them into the central Phoenix neighborhood. What we hope to do is really have more infrastructure and services. For example, one thing we hear from neighbors is that people experiencing homelessness are forced to use bathrooms in the alleys, not, not bathrooms, but to go to the bathroom in alleys. I have if a home that building, backs on one of those alleys. If we are building 
plumbed, full restroom, restroom facilities that people can use, can that take some of the burden off neighborhoods? So can we build infrastructure that will make it easier for both the neighbors and the people experiencing homelessness? As I was thinking about this interview, I was struck by the fact that from your office in City Hall and from Governor Ducey's office on the ninth floor of the Executive Tower, you can both see the homeless campus from opposite ends of Washington Street. Is the governor doing enough to help the city deal with this crisis? What I have asked the governor is that the number one thing the state could do to help us is find land or some type of buildings where people currently experiencing homelessness could go in the short term so that we can get people off a situation where they're on the streets without good bathroom facilities. We have not heard back from the governor about whether or not they can help us in that area. Um, he has agreed to sit down and convene mayors to talk about homelessness in Maricopa County. Is there a date? We are looking towards the end of March, but we, we don't have a final date yet. It often seems these days the legislature gets in the way of what cities want to do. They want to be the boss of you. Would we, that be a problem here? We have been preempted on many of the tools that we'd like to use. Arizona is the first state in all of the United States to preempt cities from requiring affordable housing. Uh, they've also made it much harder for us to, and for Maricopa County to manage some of the hygiene issues around the campus, really preempting us in that area. But there is some good news coming from the legislature. Uh, we have seen forward motion on a housing tax credit, which would help with affordable housing dollars. I'm also a strong supporter of a bill that's moving forward that would create an appropriation for a emergency shelter for older adults in Western Maricopa County. Right now, Phoenix is 40% of the population of Maricopa County, but we have 83% of the emergency beds. We would like other communities to step up. Uh, we've seen cities, for example, one West Side city recently signed a contract to bring people experiencing homelessness in that city to Phoenix. To and my Phoenix. Answer, my request to that mayor was, can you step up and have facilities in your community? I think. And research shows that the best outcomes for people are when they are with their social network, with their friends and family, and can have supportive services. Which city was that? Peoria. Peoria, all right. Uh, got your name down, Peoria. Uh, I will have to end that part of the discussion there. I want to go to something that's been dominating conversation, at least conversations I've heard for the last week, the city council voting uh, for a civilian review uh, of police. Your model didn't have enough support. Uh, Councilman Car Carlos Garcia's model did have enough support that one out. You voted for that mm -hmm. in the end and helped help get it through. There's a lot of blowback uh, over the last several days from police and residents about the plan. Perhaps they don't understand it enough. Do you regret your vote? I think it's important that the city of Phoenix is moving forward with a lot of modernizations for our police department from body cameras to better training and civilian oversight. I think that was a responsible step but it has to be viewed in the context of our overall investments. We're doing millions of dollars of raises for our officers. We're hiring more. We're providing better training for the huge number of challenges they face on a daily basis. And we are going to have more tools for accountability. All right. Got to end it there. Mayor Kate Gallego, thank you so much for joining yeah. us.